Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our today's session. We're going to talk about a great topic that's uh, interesting for all those who are leaders or who would like to be a leader one day. Today, we're going to talk about leading with style. We will discuss how leaders can use situational leadership and emotional intelligence in order to tackle complex decision making in business. So, in order to enhance this toolbox, we need to find the right approaches for deciding on behalf of the managers, the owners, the employees, and the community as a whole. In particular, managers have the responsibility of governing the company for enhancing employees' well-being. And this could be particularly difficult. So today we're going to start uh, by uh, thinking together with uh, our panel members, how can we decide when should we live differently in order to maintain greater sustainability in our organizations? So I want to tell Alexandra Kalazani, so Dr. Alexandra Kalazani to start. So how can we decide when to live differently, Alexandra? Thank you. Um, with pleasure, thanks for uh, the invitation. Our, the core idea is uh, to consider that in the hospitality and tourism industry, uh, customer satisfaction is uh, significantly directly with the human service. And the human service, in order to be of a high quality, need to be correlated with the uh, an appropriate employees engagement. So when your employees are engaged, are passionate, are identified with the company culture, they perform with the more high quality. They are more attuned with the customers and they are more willing to care. That's the poor essence of hospitality. So leaders, uh, how the leader can uh, properly engage employees, we suggest that situational leadership and emotional intelligence are the two concrete ways to engage people. Uh, more into the details, a situational leadership means that the leader should uh, first of all analyze situations because each situation is different. Each employee vary according to personality characteristic and the needs uh, together with, of course, a level of knowledge and the level of experience, etc. So first of all, leaders should analyze situation according to some objective criteria and then consciously choose what is the most congruent way to lead and drive people. Otherwise, we may risk that the people don't follow us completely. For example, a uh, cabin crew or a housekeeper, uh, then there is no much effectiveness if the leaders simply drive in a directive way because they know already what to do. The level of experience is already mature, the level of knowledge can be okay. So what they need is not to be directed. They need to be supported and care to avoid the risk of for a, a very boring and repetitive job, risking to job stress. So, in order to practice a situational leadership, emotional intelligence need to be incorporated. So, practicing situational leadership is not only related to acquiring theoretical knowledge, Rather, is a stronger related to the leader's self-consciousness and the leader's empathy in uh, practicing the sensitivity in understanding what are the specific needs and the specific uh, personal characteristic of the employees he or she is leading. Mm? That's in few words is my proposal for you. Mm? Okay, so in other words, what you're saying, Alexandra, is that we need uh, to take different factors into account for deciding how to lead. 
Yes, exactly. First of all, analyzing situation that vary. Okay, each hotel, each company, each airline is different. So situation can be analyzed with objective criteria, such as level of knowledge, level of employees, uh, type, typology of the job, but significantly also the, the employee's personality. And also, of course, the leader's personality, because the leader may be uh, have a, a tendency to be achievement oriented, first of all, for example, but this uh, personal style need to be adapted. Otherwise, there are situations in which be achievement oriented, it doesn't work. So self-consciousness and empathy is the critical connection to maximize the analysis of uh, the criteria, such as the one that we mentioned. So that's a really interesting point that you're making. So it could uh, uh, lead us uh, uh, to think that there could be functional leadership, but also there could be dysfunctional leadership. Yes. Would you like to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, when the leader fail of uh, be self-conscious about how he or she is driving people or uh, not enough empathic in sensing the needs of the employees, there is a strong risk for job stress because the people may risk to feel uh, uh, not considered, not supported, particularly in the fragile jobs, as I mentioned, in the housekeeper or cabin crew or in the front line. The leader, let me uh, say also in this way, uh, need to be considered not only in the general president position, but leadership as well as we have example uh, in the airlines, uh, it can and it must be uh, related also to senior positions that can mentor and training a local and a junior position. In this way, leadership is uh, spread and uh, considered as a way to uh, engage employees. Also, dysfunctional leadership and the job stress can be uh, seen when the leaders fail to be self-conscious about own way to drive people and when there is a lack of self-consciousness about personality. We have example of narcissistic leaders in which lack of empathy and lack of self-consciousness dramatically cause uh, situation in squeezed as a lemon. Uh, and when the juice is finished, the employees are thrown away. So we should prevent and the leaders should, you know, increase, uh, and we will see later how the leader can increase self-consciousness. In the hospitality, that's, let me repeat again in conclusion, is very important because customer satisfaction is not only related to quality of food, quality of wine, or the beautiful of you know, the hotel in which you are sleeping, but also and significantly is related to the quality of the service. And the service is related to the engagement. And who we take care about the engagement? The leader. Hmm? That's in few words. Great. Thank you very much, Alexandro. So if we uh, uh, think about it, we could have uh, um, a summary of several takeaways uh, to uh, um, keep with us after uh, your explanations. Well, first of all, leadership uh, uh, can help uh, making complex decisions at a high level, at supervisory level, at individual level, and it can make a real difference in a company by reducing stress among employees, especially among the most vulnerable ones. However, that's not all. We could say uh, that uh, the leadership uh, that is situation also helps the company to reach its own objectives. So delivering high level customer service. Uh, and uh, at the same time, the adoption of leadership style uh, uh, driven by many factors that uh, uh, we have talked about uh, helps making such decisions. 
And finally, uh, we could say that uh, it's emotional intelligence that helps uh, leaders to uh, be truly situational and lead with appropriate style. So if you would like to read more, I would suggest uh, several further readings uh, from, such, uh, from uh, uh, Service uh, uh, Indices Journal, so from Alexandra Cavalzania and his co-authors. That would be a great idea to take a look at the sources uh, for uh, those of you from our audience who would like to enhance their knowledge about the theoretical background mm. regarding the uh, situational leadership and emotional intelligence. And now we have the second big question. Now that we know that there is a whole theory behind the situational leadership and emotional intelligence and how important it is for uh, making complex decisions so that take into account the employee's well-being, what do we do about it? So how do we uh, find uh, such approaches uh, for implementing situational leadership uh, in business so that uh, managers uh, know how to choose among the right leadership styles? So we're going to turn to our expert, uh, Hokan, who is going to present uh, us uh, his business perspective on implementing situational leadership in organizations. Please, Hokan, and Thank you so much, Evelina, and thank you, Alessandra, for explaining the, the importance of emotional intelligence and situational leadership. So, so now I want to talk a little bit about how can you actually as a leader become emotionally intelligent situational leader, right? And you know, how can you learn the situational leadership model? And how can you enhance your emotional intelligence, right? I think we all know that becoming a leader requires a lot of skills. There are technical skills, there are cognitive abilities, you need to be visionary, look strategically, etc. But Emotional intelligence, and uh, I'm sure you who are listening to this are familiar with the work of Daniel Goleman, who really made emotional intelligence popular. And one of the things that stands out of his research is that apparently emotional intelligence is twice as important as other skills in order to become effective as a leader, right? And we're talking here about emotional intelligence, about self-awareness. We're talking about self-regulation of your emotions. Talking about motivation, we're talking about empathy and social skill, right? And I think especially the first one is worth investigating a little bit more. I mean, even Socrates said, know thyself. But honestly, how many of you really know your own character, your own limitations and strengths? We probably think we do, but do we really? That's my question especially when we are under pressure, when we are tired. Do you know how people see you, perceive you? Or are there some blind spots, perhaps? A very brief example, a few years ago, I worked in a human resources department and the HR director there, um, she was someone that I wasn't sure if she actually was that emotionally intelligent. Let me tell you why. One day, one an employee came up to me and he said, what is wrong with the HR director? And I said, what do you mean? Well, she actually looks scary. And I was intrigued. So I walked by the office of the HR director and I looked in. And indeed, her facial expression did not really feel welcome to me. I did not want to go and talk with her that day. So she had... She was not aware what she was exposing to the world that day. She probably could have needed to become much more aware of a blind spot. The big question here though, can emotional intelligence be learned? I am absolutely convinced it can be, you know, in the same way as I strongly believe that leaders are made, not born, you can enhance your emotional intelligence. And the challenge we have here, if we want to become effective leaders is that Many, not all, leadership development programs in companies that I have seen are not sufficiently and deeply enough covering behavioral change. And that's what's needed to become an emotionally, more emotionally intelligent, right? You need to be able to identify and sometimes change your behavior. And in order to do that, you need to go a little bit deeper than just this, what in the surface, you know, what are your thoughts and feelings and, and assumptions? 
And that often is neglected or not going deep enough uh, in programs. Imagine you're sitting in a group, you go to a great leadership program, but are people willing to go that deep to share their inner, inner beliefs and inner uh, thoughts and emotions? Maybe, sometimes, but most of the time, not able to, uh, to go deep enough. And also what is really needed is some help. You need feedback. Perhaps you need to do a 360 with the people working for you and some other assessment tools to really cover, give you a full picture of those behavior patterns you have. And if those are not serving you, you need to identify better behavior patterns to replace them with, right? So what I'm proposing here is that not only a different approach to learning, but also an individualized approach. If you're really serious, you're becoming effective as a leader. And the other challenge is it takes time. It is not anything you do over the weekend in a beautiful conference setting in the Swiss mountains, no. And this is where coaching comes into the picture. I've seen through coaching that it's one of the most effective methods to let, how should I say, emotions come up to the surface. Discover what people really think about things and really see each other. And what do I mean by coaching? Well, it's a one-to-one -one session, or sessions, of course, between a professional coach and a leader. And one of the most important things by coaching is that it, because it's one-to-one, -one, and after a while, it is developed a big trust between the coach and the leader. And that is what is needed for the real emotions to come up to the surface, right? And we bring it in in a coaching session, the feedback that the manager or the leader has received and really, really discuss them and what they mean and what is the impact. And once everything is lifted up to the surface, you agree with the leader what he or she can do about it because he or she needs to go back to the workplace and practice and then come back and discuss it with the coach and others, right? And these sessions is to me not going to replace leadership development, not at all, it's a compliment, right? So that's, um, that's one of my key messages here today. What about situational leadership? Well, that is, as explained by Alessandro, we believe it's very, very important to adapt our leadership to different situations, different criteria there, and be able to analyze that. Part of that is learning a model and to practice it and build some skills. But the real power is when you merge these two, if you go through a more traditional leadership skills building, learn about situational leadership, and then combine it with, with coaching, right? So little by little, with these approaches, you can become an emotional intelligent situational leader. If I conclude what I'm trying to say here is that in order to develop effective leaders, organizations really need to be aware of that Skills building helps, absolutely, especially if it's experiential, what I call holistic, connected to the workplace, stretching the participants, but it's not enough. Because leaders need to become fully aware of how they behave and how others perceive them. And briefly mentioned before, various assessments and 360 feedback tools can be really helpful here. Right. So with this in mind, individual aspect of development needs to be added. In particular, working with a coach can be highly impactful to create those sustainable workplaces with sustainable leadership. That also improves the well-being and avoids stress, as we previously talked about. So the answer to become an effectively emotionally intelligent situational leadership leader is to look holistically and individually at the development and be aware of that it takes time. A lot more can be said. Is the leader open to change, for example, and the role of mentorship in organization? But that is for another conversation. 
Great, thank you very much, Hokan. That's a very comprehensive uh, uh, explanation how can businesses uh, implement uh, uh, programs that could support development of situation leadership and emotional intelligence. So uh, we could uh, uh, actually uh, uh, take away an important point from what you have uh, explained is that uh, individualized uh, approaches such as coaching and uh, as you have just mentioned, uh, mentoring uh, uh, could uh, help managers to develop the right skills for situational leadership in addition to more formal trainings, conferences and other measures that companies are putting into place. So that's really uh, interesting uh, and uh, useful for managers who would like to implement these types uh, of uh, support within their organization. But now we have a question. Now that we know that in business in general, situational leadership is uh, uh, highly useful, particularly in combination with emotional intelligence, now that we know that it's feasible to put it into practice, we can ask ourselves the question, does it fit for service, hospitality and tourism industry? So for answering this question, I would like to welcome George, uh, who will talk about it. So George, could you please share your perspective uh, on this question? Let's welcome George Adnos. Okay, thank you very much, Evelina, and thank you very much, Alessandro and Hokan, for uh, the very interesting points you have made. Uh, I will actually give you more of an example of what I have experienced uh, in my time as uh, in leadership positions, both in Europe and in Asia, in Thailand, and how I have uh, used some of the topics of the uh, of the. Uh, skills that you have mentioned before, such as uh, situational leadership, etc., in order to manage the different employees that I have had. So uh, just uh, uh, to make a quick overview, uh, I have been uh, in leadership positions, as I, as I was mentioned, both in Europe, in Spain and in Switzerland, and in Asia, that would be in Thailand, in different uh, industries, well, sectors within the industry, uh, both in, I have been in a travel company, I have been in educational institutions, as I am now, and also I am uh, the owner at a restaurant in Bangkok, which is the example that I feel it would be uh, the one given more uh, interesting uh, takeaways for this uh, topic that we are covering today. So in Europe, when I've been uh, leading uh, in leadership positions, sorry, in Europe, I would say that it, I was kind of in my comfort zone in a way that uh, it was my own culture. I knew what to expect from the employees. I knew to expect uh, what to expect from the different levels. And I even uh, have a more facility, a higher facility to empathize, empath empathize with them. While when I moved to Asia and I changed to a totally different culture in Thailand, uh, I came out of my uh, comfort zone and I had to apply, I had to be more adaptable, as you mentioned before, and is when I use the most of this situation, uh, situational leadership as well. So I'm going to give you the example of, as I was saying, my restaurant in Thailand. Uh, we need to think that one of the big differences between restaurants or hotels, uh, businesses in the hospitality industry in uh, Europe or in Southeast Asia, in this case in Thailand, it would be the big economic differences between the service employees, the managers and the customers of those uh, businesses. We need to think that while you are working in Europe, for example, let's say in a four star hotel, it doesn't mean that during your holidays, even if you are just a service employee at a four star hotel, probably you can go yourself to a four star hotel as well, afford this kind of business, uh, sorry, this kind of establishment during the, your holidays. However, in Southeast Asia, in Thailand in particular, it would be something unthinkable. So the service employees, uh, they are at a different, totally different economic level. And in order for them to be able to afford going for just a dinner at one high-end restaurant, et cetera, we are talking about using probably their whole monthly salary. So that's why I found that when trying to lead these employees and to focus on customer satisfaction, as we mentioned before, as Alessandro mentioned, uh, they have uh, a higher difficulty to relate 
to the kind of customers they had because they are they are at a different economic level and they don't know what the customers are expecting etc that's why i realized that in this case with these uh, lower level employees those um, service employees that they were coming mainly from other countries either thailand or other countries in southeast asia i had to use kind of a more directive uh, leadership style Actually, it's not that it was my preferred style, but I realized that this is what they were looking for. This is what they were expecting from me as a leader as well. However, at the same moment, I was leading uh, other positions, for example, the chef. The chef came from Spain as me, so uh, he had a totally, a totally different background, totally different, as we were mentioning, economic level as well. And the type of leadership I uh, used with him, it was more participative. As well. Apart from the leadership style, another thing that I had to adapt uh, was the way of motivating the employees, talking about human resources, etc. I realized that logically those uh, employees in the lower positions, they were uh, more easily motivated with money. Uh, by bonuses, etc. Not only uh, the actual money, but something related to their economic uh, benefits. Like, for example, we had some students with, uh, sorry, some uh, employees with children, and those employees, uh, we motivated them and we rewarded them by sponsoring the education of the children as well. So this would be something that they would value more than other ways that we could use with other kind of employees. With the chef, for example, it would be more focusing on uh, his free time. So instead of motivating him with bonuses, etc., I would uh, give him some extra days, uh, extra holidays, some half day uh, per week that he would prefer to profit with his family, etc. So this is different styles, not just in leadership, but also when talking about motivation. Also, another important thing about uh, the differences, not just the differences between the type of employees, it was the characteristics of the labor market in Thailand. Especially when we are talking about hospitality, we need to consider that the uh, level of unemployment in Thailand, in Bangkok especially, that is where I have my restaurant, it was very, very low in the restaurant sector, meaning that many employees uh, especially those that care mainly because uh, they care for the money, etc. They have this mentality. Uh, they would easily, if they have one day, one bad day at work, they will just leave during the service, disappear, and then find another job very easily. So this was a challenge in terms of the difficulty to keep our employees. So what we did, there was two examples that I think they are very interesting in how we managed, uh, how, we le uh, how we led the restaurant and the employees, depending on the situation. One of them was talking about the service charge. So in Bangkok uh, restaurant scene, especially in the high end area that is where our restaurant was located, there's a compulsory service charge that all the customers need to pay. And usually restaurants will pay that service charge to their employees together with the salary. After some months in the restaurant and after seeing the characteristics of the employees, we realized that number one, uh, this would be one factor that could contribute to this difficulty to keep em employees because if at the end of the month, they are tired with the work, they are not happy for any reason, and they don't tell us how to improve the situation, and they receive a very big amount of money, they will think that, okay, now this is my moment to leave. And then this was, this was the case at the beginning. On the 31st of the month, we will pay the salary, and then the first, they would never not give a notice and they will disappear. Second factor was that many employees at the middle of the month, they will kind of ask for an advance payment because they couldn't manage their money uh, that efficiently uh, because of this dependence and maybe these differences with economic levels and now they were more aware of how people are spending their free time and maybe they were overspending more than they used to before working for us so uh, what we did it was separate the salary and the service charge we would pay the salary at the end of the month and the service charge during at the middle of the month so this was something thinking from the point of view of the employees, they would be able to manage these salaries and this income more efficiently. And also for us, it would be a way 
to keep the employees uh, interested and motivated to continue working. For example, if I want to leave because I had a bad day, I would think, okay, if I wait 10 more days, I will get my service charge. So there's an, another motivation for me to stay and not to find another job and leaving without a notice, etc. The second example, and this with this I will finish, it would be that even if this thing already exists in big companies, that is the Provident Fund, is something that is in small or medium organization, it doesn't exist. And in our restaurant, we used it even if we had only 10 employees. And we encourage employees in order for them to save for the future and also to be more careful when they make decisions about changing jobs or staying, etc. It would be the company will um, uh, will take uh, a small amount from their salary and we will also put that same amount from our pocket and keep it in a separate account for them to save. And in the moment they will leave the organization in the future, they will get all the money. This would be a good thing that they could use for some investment, or if they want to change careers, they would have some pocket money uh, when they make the decision, etc. And they will get money that they save out of their salary, but also some extra money that we put. This would be, again, good from, uh, for the employees because uh, many of them, we found that they have difficulties saving money and we uh, facilitate this task for them. And second, good for the business because if they left us without notice, of course, we will give them their part, but we would give the part that we have been adding uh, for them. And it will motivate them to whenever they want to leave, they will give us enough notice so that we can have replacement, train the new employees, etc. So these are two of the big examples that we did during our time in Bangkok. Great, thank you very much, George. Uh, that's really interesting. And it shows that indeed, uh, in practice, uh, leaders can uh, make uh, a, a great use uh, of situation leadership uh, in the hospitality industry. We can also see from your example that the situation leadership can be applied at different levels. It can be applied at individual level, so on the, in your one-on-one -one interactions that you mentioned uh, uh, with employees uh, and with Spanish chef, for instance. And you have shown us also that situation leadership uh, can be taken to another level when we create uh, the entire human resource management practices, uh, for example, for the compensation HR practices, as the organizational level. Correct. So, yeah, that's great. And uh, your example also shows that uh, the multicultural environment, multicultural teams, the hospitality industry uh, makes uh, makes situation leadership particularly valuable. So that's really interesting. And uh, if we uh, uh, think about uh, it uh, from a more from a holistic perspective. We could say that there, there are a lot of benefits that come with situation leadership, especially when it is put in place by emotionally intelligent leaders. However, if we are thinking holistically, we need to think about the upsides, but also about the downsides. So, in your opinion, what are the potential risks that are associated with leadership style variation that necessarily comes in when you start practicing situation leadership? So who would like to share their opinion about the risks? From my side, as I said, um, the potential risk uh can be seen only when there is a dysfunctional uh, leadership i mean when the leader have not either a good enough theoretical knowledge or they are failing about be self-conscious and empathic they may risk to act chaotically randomly and uh, in this way you know acting instinctively that's not effective from the other side instead if there is a good enough knowledge and training as uh, professor Rokan indicated in uh, the coaching mentoring and uh, supporting the leaders in be self-conscious i would not see any risk but i would even uh, instead appreciate uh, the congruence 
the matching between, uh, as also uh, Jorge mentioned in the real case example, there is a matching between the employees' needs and the organizational culture mediated by the leader. So there is only potential development for improving congruence in the company and increasing customer satisfaction. That's my comment. Yeah, that's a really insightful comment. Thank you very much, Alexandro. Uh, Hocan, would you like to share your perspective? Do you think that there are any risks coming with leadership style variation? Yeah, thank you, Evelina. I think, um, um, I mean, following a little bit on what Alessandro just explained, uh, I think one aspect is that, you know, of course, if you're not fully trained, or you may be doing your analysis of the employees without uh, a complete picture. Uh, but I want to add one part there, and that is the building a partnership with your employees. And what I mean with that is that there might be that, you know, in order to lead a certain employee in, in a based on a situational leadership model, I personally think it's very important to explain to your employees why you are applying such a leadership uh, approach to them, right? You might need to explain to them why you need to be directive with someone. And can, so that's what I mean with building a partnership there. Um, so if you don't do that, there might be a, a little bit of a risk following that. So that's, so that, that, that's, that's one aspect. I think the, the other risk is that, I mean, it comes back to, uh, to skills building and learning about it, but there is no one size formula when it comes to leadership development in companies. Companies need to be aware of that and take it seriously and adapt their training programs and the coaching to the to the individual to the individual and organizational needs. Thank you. Great, well, thank you very much. And indeed, it, uh, your points highlight the importance uh, of a systemic approach uh, uh, to leadership development in a company that would combine formal training and more individualized approaches. Great. So, George, would you like to add uh, um, to our discussion? I think uh, I, going on the same line as Hokan and Alessandro as well, I think one of the big risks would be uh, trying to simplify your leadership style by generalizing, uh, by trying to imagine if I said, OK, from now on, every Thai worker, every Thai employee, I believe that all of them, because they are Thai, because of the origin or because of the position, they all are focused on money and they all cannot manage their own savings, etc. Actually, when I did this, it was an individual approach. And this is something that we should do uh, like this, especially in my case, it would be an easier way because I had not a very big number of employees it was only 10 in total but in big organizations we should also follow uh, this idea of individualizing as well and i also like uh, the word that hogan added about partnership i think this is very very important because this is something that uh, without explaining to them uh, my leadership style or what is exactly all the ideas, I didn't mention the word situational analysis to, sorry, situational leadership uh, to my employees, I explained to them that, of course, I always listen to them first and see what are they expecting from us, from the company, from the leaders, and then adapt to whatever they are expecting from us as well. So this is uh, what I did in the practice, which is very related to both uh, what both Alessandro and Hokan mentioned. So that's a very uh, uh, important uh, observation to share with our audience so that uh, hospitality, tourism and service managers in general uh, uh, could know from your experience that uh, uh, it is possible to be situational and it is possible to mitigate risks that might come uh, uh, from um, uh, uh, this way of leading people. So now that we have uh, uh, talked about uh, different risks as well as advantages, what kind of practical advices uh, could we give uh, uh, to companies uh, so that uh, they could support decision-making through situational leadership and emotional intelligence? So would you like to share any practical tips? 
if you want, I can mention. So for me, uh, as I was following and continuing with what I was uh, saying before, very important is to get to know uh, your employees in order, as uh, Alessandro mentioned in the first slides, uh, in order to apply uh, situational leadership, we need to uh, focus on different aspects, not just on the employees, not just on the actual situation, not just on your own personality as a leader, but all of them combined. And many leaders, they are just too self-absorbed, I would say. They just focus maybe on the situation, but they don't get to know their employees. So this would be something that I would uh, recommend to business owners. They, uh, during the, um, uh, when you are training, even during coaching, or when you are studying to become a leader as well, uh, you will get many chances to practice in different situations. You will know what to do in this specific situation, like in a business situation, in a crisis situation, etc. But the opportunity to get to know your employees and to listen to them, it's only going to happen once you are in the actual position. And this is something that you should focus on. The things that you learned before, you can still use them, but now the position and the actual employees you are having is what you should center more, like getting to know them and listen to them. That's a valid uh, advice. Thank you very much for sharing that. I would agree also with uh, Jorge in emphasizing the idea that while uh, to some particular situations in which uh, probably the job is quite repetitive and uh, structured already uh, requiring consequently a very emotional support to avoid the, the risk of being bored and careless. From the other side, in the hospitality and in tourism, particularly unfortunately nowadays uh, for the tragedy of the coronavirus, and the crisis that has been uh, the dramatic consequence of uh, such uh, uh, situation, I would uh, recommend a participative leadership. I mean, uh, to be courageous in uh, sharing with the colleagues, with the board of director. I mean, because uh, we, if we share problems, vision with a, a close group of a board, of uh, you know two three four five leaders or uh, with the representative of the different department uh, probably we increase uh, uh, the efficacy of leadership because we share responsibility we share difficulties we share uh, problem solving creativity so particularly in this uh, um, crisis hmm? that's my fault well, that's a very inspiring message of hope uh, that shows uh, how to lead uh, in crisis uh, uh, while choosing the right participative leadership style. So thank, thank you, you very much, Alexandra. Hokan, would you like to share any practical suggestions with uh, the decision makers who might be uh, uh, watching us right now? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, one thing that comes to my mind, which maybe is a more practical tips for the leaders who are maybe are on their journey to become more uh, situational and emotionally intelligent. One thing I learned some years ago was that um, typically when we lead others, when we, let's say we are leading a team, it's very easy to just focus on the task. But I'm, what I am asking here or suggesting here is a quick little approach, three-step approach that you can be helpful uh, in your situation of leadership. And that is actually to take a few moments to think about what's going on with yourself. You know, you're sort of gripping yourself. What is going on with you? What's in your mind? So take a moment of focus, uh, being, being mindful, etc. That's first yourself. Then you check around in your team. And it can be simple things like walking around and saying a, a, a hello in the morning and really mean it because you will see if your employee is there's something going on that you need to deal with but once you have checked in with yourself checked in with your team that is the time to go in and take in the decisions and work work with your with your team um, that's just a practical thing that came to my mind uh, when it comes to decision makers i all i want to say is that take leadership development seriously because if you invest in in leader 
leadership development, and in particular what we are proposing then, that means engaged leaders. That means engaged employees, and that's good for the whole organization. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Hocan. So that's a great message uh, of uh, uh, confederation around the organizational goals. And indeed, as you had mentioned, uh, it uh, could be uh, uh, put in place together uh, through situation leadership. And especially if the leaders uh, are ready to take the journey of becoming more self-aware uh, and uh, becoming more emotionally intelligent in business setting. So. Um, we have talked today about uh, the situation leadership and emotional intelligence principles. We have talked about the way how businesses can put them into practice. And uh, uh, we also have talked uh, about um, the way uh, how hospitality and tourism industry can benefit. After discussing the risks and possible advices, uh, we could make uh, uh, several conclusions about uh, uh, this uh, tool in the leader's toolbox. Well, first of all, situation leadership truly uh, makes the content decision making easier for business while keeping uh, the objective uh, of uh, maintaining employees' uh, well-being and actually promoting it. We could conclude the um, uh, conversation uh, also by stating that managers should vary the leadership style. We could hear uh, in uh, uh, some uh, ideas that leaders should have one leadership style. However, varying and choosing the right leadership style, depending on uh, people whom you're working with, the situation, yourself, could be uh, uh, an important tool in the leader's toolbox. And finally, uh, we could say, we could, based on our discussions that we had today, the leadership style is uh, a whole managerial skill is highly valuable and it's valuable not uh, only in hospitality and tourism it's valuable in business in general uh, whether uh, you um, are a leader to become whether you are middle line or senior executive i would like to thank uh, our great panel i would like to start by thanking alexandro i would like to thank to Hokan and George for their great contributions uh, uh, during our whole session. And uh, uh, we uh, wish you all lots of success and we wish you to lead with style. Thank you very much for being with us.